The first beet sugar in Minnesota was made in 1898 at St. Louis Park. Most of us toss a little sugar into our coffee in the morning, but making it from sugar beets is quite a process. In 1898, there were eight sugar beet factories in California, two in Nebraska, two in New York, one in Oregon, one in Michigan, one in Idaho, one in New Mexico, and a brand new one in Minnesota. The Minnesota location was in St. Louis Park, a suburb of Minneapolis. The Minnesota Beet Sugar Company was formed in May of 1897, with two state senators being the prime backers, Gustav Thieden and Henry Keller. Mr. Keller became the Minnesota plant's first general manager. Later, Keller resigned and F.W. Fink took over. The newly formed company needed to find a location to build a beet processing plant. After looking at many potential sites, the company purchased the Esterly Harvester Plant in St. Louis Park. The large Esterly Harvester Plant was built in 1892, but had been shut down several years later. The Esterly Plant produced various types of farm machinery. The St. Louis Park factory was about six miles from downtown Minneapolis, on a major railroad artery. Let's take a closer look at the area within the black box. From the main railroad line, there were several factories in St. Louis Park, in close proximity of each other. These factories had built a system of side tracks to accommodate their shipping needs. The Minnesota Beet Sugar Company hired the Kilby Manufacturing Company of Cleveland, Ohio to retrofit the plant to process sugar beets. This cost the company about $250,000, or the equivalent of $9 million in 2022. Here is another photo of the new St. Louis Park plant. It took Kilby 80 railroad cars to transport all the needed equipment to the new Minnesota plant. Most of the equipment was powered by a coreless steam engine and a battery of boilers. Western Electric furnished a dynamo and engine that powered the lights for night work. To handle all the railroad cars that would be coming and going from its plant, the Minnesota Sugar Company purchased its own locomotive and tender. Here's an actual photo of the locomotive and tender with some of the beet plant workers. The company constructed new wells to go along with the wells that already existed to give the plant a capacity of 4 million gallons of water a day. The factory employed somewhere between 250 and 350 workers. To convince farmers of the benefits of growing sugar beets, company officials spoke to farmers all over the state. One such meeting was held at the Freeborn County Courthouse, where the company explained that in order for them to succeed, they needed their growers to succeed. At a meeting in Winona, the company explained they would provide the seed and all the necessary instruction in growing the beets. In addition to meetings, the company also advertised in various farm-related publications. Speaking of growing, let's examine what was expected of the farmer. The fields had to be plowed at least 8 inches deep. After plowing, the clods of soil had to be broken up with a fine harrow. The beet seed came from Volkstedt, Germany. Sugar beets had been grown for a long time in Europe and Russia. When the seeds arrived, they were shipped to various points around the state of Minnesota. Horse-drawn cedars were used to plant the seeds into the soil. Larger operations had more than one cedar. The seeds had to be planted three quarters of an inch deep in rows 18 inches apart. After they had sprouted and began growing, they had to be thinned and weeded. This was a labor-intensive process conducted by groups of men, women, and children. As the beet grew, sunlight furnished the energy. 
Roots absorb the necessary water and salts, which moved up to the leaves. The sugar is made in the leaves of the growing beet plant, but this sugar is stored in the root. The sugar beet has an extensive root system, which can extend over five feet into the soil. In the fall, the sugar beets were harvested. The beets were either removed from the ground by hand or by a special implement called the lifter, which was pulled by horses. The tops, or the leaves, had to be removed from the beet. Then the beets had to be loaded into wagons. Once full, the wagons were driven either to the plant grounds or to the nearest railroad connection. These wagons depended on good roads to get the beets to the factory. Once they arrived, they waited in line to dump their beets. If they transported their beets by rail, they had to dump their beets into rail cars. This could involve shoveling the beets by hand. Some shipping points had elevated platforms for the farmer, where the wagon could be tipped to quickly dump out the beets. Once enough sugar beet cars accumulated in the yard, a locomotive would transport them to the factory in St. Louis Park. This is an example of what a beet train may have looked like, pulled by the Minnesota Sugar Company's locomotive. At the St. Louis Park factory, wagons and rail cars dumped the raw beets on the grounds. Some rail cars had detachable sides that allowed the beets to pour out. However, there was still a lot of hand labor involved in this process. This photo shows the large piles of sugar beets on the grounds at St. Louis Park. Sugar beets grown in different soil types and different geographic areas have different sugar contents, so each load was tested as it arrived. This worker was gathering a bushel basket of beets to test. This photo shows the testing room at St. Louis Park. Farmers were paid according to the sugar content of their beets. Once the beets arrived at the factory, the processing began. Processing was not done year-round, only in the fall into the early winter, after the harvest. In its first year, 1898, beet processing began on October 18th. It was said that a sugar beet entering the factory in the morning could be turned into white sugar by the evening. But how exactly did that occur? From the yard, the beets were fed from the bottoms of the hoppers into wooden or metal flumes. There were powerful streams of water in the flumes, which cleaned the beets and conveyed them to the plant. Inside the plant, a big wheel scooped the beets from the flume into the washer. After the cleaning, the beets were fed into a shredding machine, which cut the beets into noodle-sized pieces called cassettes. The cassettes were conveyed to the top of the building to another hopper. When this hopper reached 1,400 pounds, the cassettes were fed to the juice extractor. There were actually 14 juice extractors, which were arranged in a circle. This process extracted the juice from the cassettes. The dry shreds were packed into cars and run out into the yard and dumped. This byproduct was sold by the wagon load to farmers as food for stock. Next, the beet juice had to be mixed with lime. The lime was quarried at Faribault, Minnesota and carried by rail car to St. Louis Park. When it arrived in bulk at the sugar beet factory, eight to 10 men with sledgehammers crushed the rock further so it could be turned into a liquid form. This lime milk helped remove impurities from the juice. The used lime was packed into cars, run outside on tracks, and sold as fertilizer to the farmers. Evaporators removed additional water from the juice until it became a syrup. The syrup was pumped to what was called a strike pan which contained 13 tons of syrup. An expert then cooked the syrup to obtain the proper size of crystals. From the strike pan 
conveyors delivered the crystallized product to whirling copper pans. The force of this action separated the crystals from the remaining syrup. This would turn the crystals from a taffy color to pure white. The crystals were then conveyed to a final dryer, which removed any lingering moisture. This tumbling action also helped separate the crystals. The crystals passed through several screens, which separated the granulated sugar from the dust. The granulated sugar was sold as fine sugar, while the dust was sold as powdered sugar. The final step was packaging, either in 100-pound sacks or barrels. Minnesotans loved to buy home products, and sugar was no different. This was an advertisement for the new sugar from Redwood Falls. The Mauer County transcript from Austin also said the new sugar was readily being used there. Even the waste products found a huge market, like this advertisement for beet pulp. Even when the temperature was below zero, numerous teams lined up to purchase the byproducts. During its first year in operation, 1898, the Minnesota Sugar Company leased land in Eden Prairie, Hastings, Mankato, Farmington, and at St. Louis Park to grow some of its own beets. That was because there was only time to sign up about 900 farmers to grow beets that first year. In addition, beets were grown in Cedar Falls and Waterloo, Iowa, and at Storm Lake. By 1904, many more farms began growing sugar beets. The five main producing counties were Carver, Scott, Sibley, McLeod, and Meeker which also happened to be very close to the St. Louis Park plant, which minimized shipping costs. This chart shows how many pounds of sugar beets were grown by year for the St. Louis Park facility. The Minnesota Sugar Company depended on the railroads to transport the beets. The Minneapolis and St. Louis Railroad delivered the most, with the Milwaukee Road and the Great Northern Railway in second and third place. Several other railroads helped bring beets to St. Louis Park, but in much lower quantities. Wagons also brought in a tiny percentage. There were some hurdles that the new company had to overcome. First, sugar beets were a brand new crop, so most Minnesota farmers had no idea how to grow them. Therefore, the company recruited Russian Mennonites who knew how to grow sugar beets, to come to Minnesota. It was said that a family of six or seven could take care of about 25 acres of beets. Another hurdle was water pollution. The company drained its waste into Minnehaha Creek, which flowed eastward toward the famous Minnehaha Falls. This obviously did not go over very well, so a sewer line had to be built and attached to the factory. On August 20th, 1904, the factory was struck by a tornado. This caused about $25,000 worth of damages to the complex. The final dagger came on May 2nd, 1905, when the factory burned down. If you look closely at this photo, you can see how much wood was used in the floors, walls, and roof. Here are some pictures of the plant after the fire. Even its fancy locomotive was destroyed. A new brick sugar beet factory was soon erected, but it was built at Chaska, Minnesota, to be closer to where most of the beets were being grown. That concludes the video. Make sure to check out my other YouTube videos and my primary website at mnbricks.com.